All right, so we're here with John Kane, the uh, national sales manager with Raypack. Um, you guys do heating and uh, or pool heating. That's your main thing. Yes. Um, a couple of questions that we might have that we have uh, often from our uh, pool owners. Um, like, why would you use a Cooper Nickel uh, heater? Uh, what's one of the main reasons that you would use a Cooper Nickel heater? Well, the Cooper Nickel heat exchanger is a little bit tougher uh, mm -hmm. against corrosion and erosion that may come from the chemicals or debris that is in the pool water running through the heater. Yeah. So basically, if you have problems with high TDS mm -hmm. or if you have a, a pool that is out of whack chemistry-wise, yeah. a Cooper Nickel heat exchanger will be more resistant to that type of, of erosion or corrosion to the actual heat exchanger itself. Uh, and, it, and it makes the heater last a little bit longer. Okay. Where we see this a lot is up around the Great Lakes area. Uh, the water's a little bit harder up there. Yeah. Or in areas like in the in the desert where water is a little bit harder, mm -hmm. Cooper Nickel seems to last just a little bit longer because it's tougher material. So it's not just a salt water uh, only uh, installation. It can be whether you have hard water or you have any kind of weird uh, chemistry going on with your that's, installation. That's correct. Uh, basically what we look at is the TDS, the total dissolved mm -hmm. solids. And if it's a very high TDS environment with the salt system, you can have yeah. that or with hard water or something along those lines, uh, we generally recommend the Cooper Nickel Heat Exchanger. And uh, let's get into low knocks just because um, we get some questions. What exactly is a low knox? Is low emission correct? Uh, it's, it's a lower percentage of particulates that are emitted when the heater is operating. Okay. Now, there are only two areas in the country right now that actually have uh, laws or regulations concerning emissions coming from pool heaters. A pool heater generally is a very low emissions compared to like a boiler or a gas heat furnace or yeah. something of that nature. Uh, so low NOx is, is basically complying with certain uh, air quality regulations in Southern California and Central Valley of California as well as in Texas. Uh, there are certain counties in California where low NOx is required, so you have to check your local air quality uh, regulations when it comes to requiring a low NOx heater. Yeah. And in Texas, on all commercial installations, you need to have low NOx. So we make a special type of heater just for that application. Oh, okay. Now, can you oversize a heater? Is there a way to, like, let's say you've got a, a 10,000 gallon pool and you put a 400K on it or a 406? Can you, is it too much? Uh, we ne we say no, okay? No. Uh, you can never oversize because nobody ever got upset that their pool heated up too quickly. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Uh, basically, we, we recommend that you slightly oversize the heater uh, that you put on the, on the pool, mm -hmm. mainly because then as the heater ages and becomes less efficient, mm -hmm. and especially if it's not maintained correctly, mm -hmm. the pool is still getting heated up to the right temperatures and in a, in a less costly manner. Yeah, we always say uh, we like to oversize it just because the quicker it gets the temp, quicker it's going to shut off. That's Nothing correct. else is being used. You know, you're, you're going to need to uh, consume a certain amount of gas to get the water temperature up to a certain uh, area. Mm -hmm. So the bigger the heater you have, the less time it's operating, the less noise that it makes, the less you know electricity that you're using. It's just more efficient to do that. And a question uh, that we sometimes get, how do you know how to size a spa heater? Do you know, is there a particular sizing range? Like if it's 500 gallons, you go with the six kilowatt or you go with 11 kilowatt or something like that? Uh, it, it's kind of hard to generalize mm -hmm. and we do have a sizing chart on our website that anybody can access. Yeah. But what we like to do is is take into account is it in the sun all the time or is it in shade? Is there a cover on the pool? Is there, you know, is it uncovered? What about uh, wind? Wind always is a factor, especially if you're on coastal regions, you yeah. know, because you constantly have wind, you know, coming in from the water. Um, Generally, we like to size the heater, like I said, slightly oversized to, you know, a lot oversized yeah, yeah. is better. Uh, but, you know, if we want to keep it right in that range, we like to slightly oversize it, mainly because of these other factors that are involved. If it's particularly windy on a certain day, uh, that will cause your pool to heat or lose heat uh, a lot faster. Yeah. So, generally, we like to size them a little bit larger, even on the small heaters, mm -hmm. even with small pools or spas. No, uh, this is something that all of our call takers uh, want answered. 
at least on tape, because uh, we get this question <laughs> from a lot of uh, call-ins, uh, and that is, we're an online company. Is Raypax warranty good when you buy from an online company such as Inyo Pools? Yes, and actually uh, Inyo is one of the companies that we we actually recommend people go to, uh -huh. uh, mainly because you guys know pools mm -hmm. and you know how to correctly size the heater as well as tell the consumer you know how to install the heater, how to operate it, how to, how to maintain the heater yeah. going forward. We recommend buying from people that know how the instrument operates and they can help you to install it correctly. So uh, the warranty is in effect. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's no issues there. Uh, Did you hear that? As, as, long, got that as long as they're <laughs> properly installed to our recommendations yeah. and uh, they're maintained correctly. Where we have a lot of warranty claims is generally because of chemical damage to the heaters. Mm -hmm. And the chemistry of the pool is where Typically, we have the most issues with people that, that <laughs> use our heaters. If you maintain the pool correctly, and Inyo is, does a great job of you know, telling the customers how to maintain their pools, mm -hmm. uh, the heater will last a long time. Yeah. And we, we know that because we get calls of like 15, 17, 20 year old ray packs correct. that are, you know, the board went out or something and we just need something uh, simple to get it back up and running. Correct. And, and that's the way we like it out there. But uh, if a pool is not maintained correctly, uh, the heater is one of the first components that, that will go bad, mainly because the heat exchangers are copper, and copper is a very soft material. Yeah. And if there's any chemistry imbalance or high TDS or things of that nature, even a Cooper Nickel heat exchanger won't last forever. Mm -hmm. Even a titanium heat exchanger won't last forever, like in our heat pumps. Yeah. You have to maintain your chemistry and, and uh, uh, the materials that are in your pool water. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to last. So is that the most important thing to maintaining uh, a pool heater, whether it's copper or cooper nickel, uh, just uh, water chemistry? Uh, water chemistry and making sure the equipment is installed correctly because mm -hmm. uh, even with salt systems, and especially with salt systems, if the, if the salt system and the heater are not installed correctly and properly bonded, yeah. then you have what is called electrolysis, and that's almost as dangerous as bad chemistry mm -hmm. and uh, high TDS. And you'll start to see that on other parts of your pool. For instance, like your ladders or your lights or anything that has anything metal associated with it, if it's exposed to that water, it will start corroding as well. So your heater just happens to be one of the first things to go because a lot of water is flowing through yeah. it very quickly. Okay, enough about heaters. Let's talk about heat pumps. Um, we got a lot of questions from people in the Northeast, like Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maine. Uh, can you use a heat pump up there? Is it recommended? Oh, absolutely. Uh, actually, outside of Florida, there are some key areas in the in North America that we sell to, and the second largest location, as far as quantity of heat pumps that are sold, is Montreal. Oh, really? Okay. And then the Ohio uh, River Valley is is also very big. The reason being is these customers have low electrical costs and their gas prices are a little bit higher, so they're looking to you know heat their pool economically and efficiently. And also, uh, a heat pump will just take the edge off uh, the seasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, they can they can start heating their pool in early May, and they can continue heating it through September and maybe into early October. They're not looking at heating the pool the whole year round. Okay, so they have low electrical costs and they have the ability to heat their pool in the time frames that they want to do it. So a heat pump actually works very, very well for them. Uh, our new platform of heat pump actually is larger uh, sizing. They have higher BTU outputs. Uh, they're much more efficient. They're quieter than our previous uh, platforms as well. So our heat pumps actually are a great value for areas that have lower electrical costs, especially with uh, gas prices being what they are lately. Yeah, and the sizing would pretty much apply again, just kind of uh, oversize it, bigger the bigger the better. The bigger the better is, is what we recommend, mainly because it's a slower heating process. A heat pump is much more efficient than a gas heater, but it heats the water slower, okay? Our largest heat pump, for instance, is, is 140,000 BTUs, which is actually smaller than our smallest residential-sized heat gas heater. The reason for this is a heat pump it will gradually bring the pool up to temperature, but once it's up to temperature, 
it maintains it very, very economically. It's, uh, for instance, a heat pump could be as much as five to 600% efficient, whereas a gas heater is 82 to 84% efficient. So it's not a perpetual motion machine, it's just for the amount of money that you spend to put energy into the unit, it gives you that much more energy into the water than what you pay for. Plus you have a titanium heat exchanger, so titanium you know, the cooper nickel is one thing, but titanium is a whole different Titanium is much better. It's not it, it's not impenetrable. Yeah. It, it can be damaged in, if you really have bad chemistry, but it does take a lot more. It's a much more expensive unit. It's a smaller diameter tube. That's why you have to have the water flowing through slower, and it doesn't transfer as much heat as, say, a gas heater would. Really appreciate uh, you guys' uh, relationship with ours, with us, just because uh, we know how good your product is and, and how long it's been around and the pedigree of it. So thank you for joining us. Thank you.